Welcome to Rotor Riot. I'm Ladrib. And I'm Alex Vanover. And we are all about flying FPV drones and getting really unique GoPro footage. So our drones are very dynamic. We can do shots that, quite frankly, a stabilized gimbal drone platform can't do. But the problem is trying to get the smooth video that makes it look like it was filmed on one of those professional Why can't we just put platforms. a gimbal on it? Let's just put a gimbal on it. Because the gimbal's too heavy. It's just out of the way. There's no good right. place to mount it on here. It really comes down to software. So a post-production sort of stabilization. Right. Or one that's built into the camera. Okay. And there's two options on the market that are really well known. Hypersmooth, which is built into the Hero 7 black camera, which is really nice. And the other option is a program called Real Steady, and that's a program that you use on your computer, and particularly Real Steady Go is their latest software, which is a lot cheaper than their full-size version, which would work with Adobe After Effects, so it's all post-stabilization, where this one just does it when you're recording. All right, so we want to put these two different ways of trying to get stabilized footage to the test. So we went to a wakeboard park and met up with some pro wakeboarders who can do crazy tricks, banging off ramps, really awesome subject yeah. for chase footage. my footage, I used GoPro's Hypersmooth. And for my footage, I used the beautiful GoPro Hero 6 with post-production real steady go in here. So to help illustrate the effects of both these methods of stabilization, let's start by looking at some footage that doesn't use either of them. I got some footage where I filmed like I normally would, mm -hmm. where I don't have Hypersmooth turned on and I have an ND filter on it. You can't use an ND filter with Hypersmooth and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So just to kind of get a baseline, okay. let's take a look at what that looks like. I can notice a few shakes. I'm also really picky, so I, I notice these things a lot more than probably most people would. But this is also full screen on a 15 inch computer, so that's already your quad is really well tuned. But it was windy, right? It's it was windy. windy. You can see a few shakes. I'm getting some buffeting. I'm also, I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous about chasing a human. Right, so, and I'm not always sure which way they're gonna go, so right. I might be shaking. You're a doing bit. a really good job actually being smooth on the six, so like, I think. That was a sweet grab. Yeah, that was a sweet grab. I think compared to what you're gonna see in my footage, you were a little bit farther back, but you're staying, you weren't moving nearly as much as I was, which I think your stock footage is gonna look better than mine, but. This is Maxi, he's. Oh, that's so Ooh, sick, just the backflip on the ground. I kind of like the, the water it's kinda <laughs> on cool the lens. Flip. But you can see like when you pop up there and everything like that, even just the little movements. When you're watching the raw footage, that's going to be apparent no matter what, unfortunately. Ooh, this rail shot. So just looking at your raw footage, it's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Without hypersmooth, you are using an ND filter, which ND filters do help a little bit in broad daylight when it comes to getting rid of vibrations and any type of oscillation helping deal with wind by lowering that shutter speed down. So that is already helping, but your footage look pretty smooth actually for being raw. So I kind of want to see what some of your hyper smooth footage Yeah, let's take a look at that. I personally don't use hyper smooth, so I'll be curious to see what hyper smooth looks like on one of your quads. That's pretty stable, but and I'm it's still doing stable. a little bit of acrobatics, you know? Right, and it doesn't look really weird when you do the roll or anything like that. Yeah, you, with Hypersmooth, you're still able to show all the movement of the drone, which can be a plus if you want to do a roll, but it can be a drawback if you need to do a sharp turn, but you don't actually want that banking right. motion to be in the video. So you're kind of stuck with the banking. In right, Hypersmooth. but just looking at the footage, obviously you're flying really, really smooth. <laughs> oh my gosh, he just like, oh, okay, that was an awesome shot. And the footage looks really smooth. Oftentimes, even when our quads are perfectly tuned, we still, when we're cruising at mid throttle, that's what we like to call mid throttle oscillations, is a very <laughs> common thing. Essentially, it's where the quads just ever so slightly jittery. Honestly, watching this though, it is really stable. It takes away a lot of that extraneous movement that you're doing on the sticks, because <laughs> that's really not a thing that any of us pilots can avoid. The footage looks really smooth. I'm, I was actually not expecting hyper smooth to look this good. Oh, I'm so, surprised. You didn't know I you're still down like that. Yeah, well, I'm pretty good. You're a pretty I good pilot, really good. though. That's the difference, is oh, you're a pretty good pilot. Thanks, Benny. But I will say this, though. It's, when you're chasing these objects, there's still more side-to-side -side and extraneous movement. The horizon is definitely not level, mm -hmm. which you'll start to see with a lot of the real steady shots. But it looks really, really good. Like, this is something I would put on a full screen and, and show people. But this takes a lot more work. You have to really be thinking about what you're doing on the sticks, obviously. I kind of want to see some shots of you moving in on the object. This looks pretty good. You're moving in a little bit more in and out of the object here. Like here becomes a turn. You're really framing him well, which we'll talk more about. Making sure you got that shot. 
Oh, Ooh. you're really close to the water. It doesn't look like you're making too many extraneous movements, which is mainly just because you are a pretty good pilot, but also because Hypersmooth is doing a really good job at making sure there's no unnecessary movements unless you basically tell it to. It kind of comes down to the, what image you want. And quite frankly, I chose this on a TV. I, I, I see you put, why haven't you posted? That was a six. Oh, 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 that was, was so good cool. until until he went down. Uh, no no shame though. I mean, he's doing, I couldn't do any of this stuff on a no, whiteboard. Heck no, 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 so. Yeah, but I think the big thing is that this is a bright, sunny day where vibrations and oscillations are going right. to be brought to and their worst point. Oh yeah, it was windy. Yeah. And you're not seeing any of that here. Right. So the Hypersmooth hides all that. I'm not getting any buffeting from being behind the wake border. This footage looks really, I think clean is the right word. Everything's just right. really clean and crisp. Right. That's nice. That was a nice shot. I want to show you the real Steady Go stuff though. I can't wait. Let's take a look at this. Honestly, watching that made, it was pretty impressive, but let's let's take a look at some of the real Steady Go shots. But, show me what you got. But I want to show you the, the raw footage first. Okay, because... so we'll see like a before and after, what came yeah. straight off the camera and then what you did to it. Yep, exactly, exactly. One thing I just want to pause and notice you see these corners here i am using an nd filter okay, and so you're getting some pretty extreme i'm vignetting. getting some pretty extreme vignetting on the nd filter that would irritate me so much right. if i was not using a real Sega go program or doing some type of app oh, so that's, is that going to take that out we'll see maybe okay so anyhow, now I'm flying a lot closer Dude, to the guys. that's a sick shot. Oh, okay, yeah, you got closer. Yeah, but my Everyone point is- Everyone in Vanover's bad at chasing, yeah, we well, know. Yeah, we know, but anyhow. Oh, that was so sick! Right. That was so sick. This guy rips. No, this guy was killing it. This is, um, this guy was awesome. You see the rainbow? Boom. That's but you can see shot. here, like I'm trying to dodge this. You see that little back and forth. But like overall, like when okay. I mean, I'm seeing the same stuff that I saw on, on my yeah. original footage, right? There's a couple little shakes and bobbles but it's from wind. Smooth. But no, you're you're killing it. You're killing it. But it's, it gets looks better. Good. Well, I mean, yeah. Let's let's uh, let show me see. You. Let me see. How let's much show you the... how much better can it get? So, so this is the same clip. This is the same clip. Now this is completely stock real steady go settings, and we'll talk about what you can change in real steady go okay. to widen the image and do all these little things. This is completely bare bones stock not changing a thing other than making sure that my endpoints and everything were set right for the footage I wanted to get. So here we go, same clip. Now, okay, automatically. Yeah, it's just immediately cinematic. Boom. Yeah, the, it doesn't look like you're yawing a copter. It just, it looks like there's just a magic scene. Watch this, watch. Remember how I was shaking back and forth? Yeah, that's all gone. You see how it's all gone? Yeah, all your, yeah. It looks really good. Like it also pushes you in closer to them. Yep. It's zooming in on the footage. Yep. yep. So it's taking a 4K file, I assume, and kind of. Yep. Essentially. Oh, that's sick. It just looks really smooth. There's even when I do a roll. That just, roll. Oh, it's, it it's, looks pretty. It right? doesn't that, look like a normal a normal drone. drone. But no. it, but it's cool. It makes for someone who's never seen it before. It's like ooh, that's definitely not something a DJI right. or a gimbal's platform would do. But even when you do like a little blip there or anything. Obviously, if it's really big, you're gonna see a little bit of it, but it's not as apparent. Look at these guys just enjoying the heck out of this this run. I I really love. No, and just guys. the way it, the lens it's, distortion removal yep. that's coming straight out of that. Wow. And it's doing a really good job framing. This is completely stock settings. Obviously, I think the framing could be slightly better in some areas, but we'll talk about how you can adjust that. But this is looking that rainbow shot. Like look at that. Like even when you did that, it still did a really good job of keeping it smooth. I am surprised. I, yeah. I expected that the real study would not do well with full right. roll maneuvers like that, like a real acrobatic move, it wouldn't be able to do it. I'll be honest, I was a little surprised myself. I haven't done much acro with it yet. And and again, you saw the, the stock footage, I was, <laughs> I was getting really close to him. I um, just, just overall, this looks like a video game. Like it, it looks does. it looks like there's a video game character riding a wakeboard and you're able to just take the camera mm -hmm. and just point it all it, around it, in a very magical, yeah. smooth way. That's It doesn't look like something captured from a normal quad. It looks like something, let's be honest, you would watch out of like a movie or something. It does. It really does. This is not the That's thing. next level. Especially when you are comparing it to the normal footage we see from Hypersmooth or even just normal raw GoPro footage. You saw the raw GoPro footage. You saw it too, how yeah. the corners were blurred because the ND filter and stock setting completely got rid of that. So real study go, just it's, it's a magic cure all, easy to use, you just throw footage in, no problem, you just don't even have to work You just it. slap that GoPro on there, and yeah, you don't have to do anything other than upload it. Um, unfortunately, Drew, I really wish that was the case, but I think we should talk about some of the disadvantages to both of these softwares, and let's start with Real Study Go, because we just watched that, and 
I have a huge winer list, unfortunately. So when you look on Real Estate's website, particularly under Real Estate Go, it says that you can use the Hero 5 Session, the Hero 6 Black, and the Hero 7 Black camera. And it does specify some things that you have to do to get all those to work, but that's not all true. So I'm using the Hero 6 Black camera, as I mentioned earlier. Which, the Hero 6 is discontinued. They don't even make that. No, they don't even make the camera anymore. So you're... Okay, so you, you have can to, still you buy have to them. Track down a yeah. discontinued camera on you Amazon do, or You eBay. do, and and B and H and a bunch of other places have them. In fact, they still actually mm -hmm. offer the warranties where you can get the cameras replaced, which is awesome because there's still a lot of them out there. At least, kind of like the Hero Five Session, you can still find them if you look hard enough. But as you can see on here, just for starters, um, that's a uh, that's a little jiggly puff up there. That's a little jiggly puff. I actually need to fix my angle again because I have to really, really soft mount the camera. Now, Real Steady advertises that with the Hero 6, you need to use some custom settings, which we'll talk about in a minute, and you need to basically just soft mount the camera on like a piece of foam. Normally uh -huh. what we would strap a GoPro on, or even just use a 3D printed mount. Well, no matter how many times I tried that, I got very, very inconsistent results. Sometimes I, happening. I pop the footage into Real Steady, I play with the stabilization and everything, and it actually makes the footage look worse. Okay, so it, it like brings out Yeah, it makes it all like jello-y and everything. Like, I had very inconsistent results. I ended up finding out that soft mounting the heck out of the GoPro with a bunch of foam like this, where basically it's just dangling on there, really, really helps. Now, Real Steady claims that that's because of the high frequency vibrations from the motors when I contacted them, but their adver their website advertised that you just basically slap it on there. And when you watch all their other team pilots, that's what it's like too. Now, I'm still not even done with my gripes. Real Steady actually recommends a 3D printed mount that you can get for the camera. And the whole point of that 3D printed mount, as they advertise, is that you can use the Hero 7 uh -huh. and the Hero 5 session with it, which I'm like, sweet, I already have three Hero 7s. Let's go ahead and try it. I got the mount, I actually got Brain 3D to print me the mounts. They're printed the exact way. These mounts, like, you can crumble these mounts in your hand easily. They're literally, like, it's a joke. Every time you crash, these mounts will break. It sounds like such now, a pain. Now, the mount is nice because the camera itself is held in there well but it's not really secure to the quadcopter itself at the same time. Long story short, the Hero 5 session doesn't work, the Hero 7 black doesn't work. You jump through all the hoops of tracking down a discontinued camera. You've done all that, then it just works. What, do you, what uh, happens? Still not always. Well, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like to do Real Steady Ghost. Go to load video, and then the clip that I wanted to look at was clip number 56 here. Um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say running the numbers, and it's gonna do gyro plus video sync, I guess. So is this taking the gyro data of the GoPro? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so the gyro data, when the GoPro is recording, is encoded onto the GoPro video file. Yeah. And then the Real Study Go uses that data. Yep, exactly. Crazy. You can't see oh, here. Oh wow, yeah, you're cool. like seeing the whole... Yep. It's so weird seeing the raw footage because yep. it's... and then you see how it's like going to be curving it in. Remember this clip when I got in front of the guy? Oh my god. Oh. And that's a really, that's that was a really hard clip for a stabilization software, so... Oh look, I, you can see it like panning down to get to it though. Oh. Now what I'm going to do is, you can wow, see... Wow, I'm just fascinated how you can already see it. What it's doing. That is so cool. Cool seeing it like happen. Right. Now, what these little markers are, essentially real study things are smooth shots. Now, that was not a smooth shot in terms of there was a lot of moving objects. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend that you go in and you delete those endpoints and you find a point in the video where you're flying perfectly smooth. Where you're like naturally flying. And smooth. then you okay. do the gyro sync again. So essentially when you set the new endpoints, it'll base the rest of the footage smoothness off of what that looked like, if that kind of makes sense. Okay. It's a little hard to explain. Nurk has a great video talking about how to set these endpoints. Down here on the right, you got this little settings tab. Now, the smoothness from what I've seen to understand, obviously it makes the image more smooth, uh -huh. but when you lower it, it makes the image wider. Oh, and then okay. when you raise it, it makes the image a lot more narrow. Okay, but then you might accidentally crop out something that you don't yes, want. Yes, exactly. Okay. So for example, if you find that after your footage, the object that you're shooting is too zoomed in. What you can go back and do is just come back into here. It'll still save all okay. that gyro data, and then you just lower it and then re restabilize it and everything. You have something called Lock Horizon if you're trying to do a shot through like a museum or something where you're not trying to do any of this whatsoever. You're so this goal. might be like a Cinewhoop stuff. A Cinewhoop okay. stuff. You want to lock the horizon in. Real Study Go is going to do the best job to keep the horizon complete like it's a gimbal. Um, but you want it to be a little bit more dynamic, so you're probably not going to turn that on? No, no, no. Not at all. So there's this other thing, cropping speed. That's how fast when you're moving in and out, essentially, it warps the image. If okay. you turn it down to fast, it. some people might like the way that looks. I think it happens too fast, if that okay. makes sense. And then flip gyro data. This is a really cool safety feature. If you hit start with the GoPro upside down like this, 
and then you put it in here without turning this on, oh, no. it's gonna get confused. So this is cool, they, they put this in here so you just click this and right. it doesn't matter. They still recommend that you turn that off though. What I wanna do is not really play with this stuff. I think their stock settings actually work phenomenal. There's also these little sliders as you can see. So this is essentially what you would be rendering when you hit save video. So uh -huh. if you only wanted to render this little clip, oh, so you can cut out the you can off cut and out, and that saves the render time. Again, if you're trying to make one clip more narrow than the other, that's what you would also do. Right, so let's just grab like a tight section that we can. Let's grab a look tight at. section. Sure. So this is just a lot you got to do, man. It's not that bad. We're gonna click save video. So it's gonna say output video will not contain audio because trim handles are set. So essentially, you're not gonna be able to get audio from this because we, if you just render the entire clip itself, you're not gonna run into this issue. And as you can see right now, it's actually rendering the clip, and that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of a cool shot right there. So we're gonna click OK, and you can see kind of the progress as the slider slowly moves over. If you had a better computer, this would be so probably how, how hard is this gonna take? I'm probably gonna guess five minutes max. Okay. So it's kind of a pain because it's gonna render, and then you have to watch it and see did it actually work. And so see if it actually worked. Right, so I know if you had a better computer though, you could watch it back in 30 FPS. It doesn't, then you have to go back and redo it, right? Yes and no. You're you're absolutely right. You won't know the finalized product. But what I usually do is I'll glance over at this, and I'm always trying to keep my laptop awake anyway. And if it's really bad, when I've had instances where the footage, no matter how much I try to get it to work, it doesn't work, you'll see it when it's running. Like, you'll see it, like, bouncing up and down. Like, if you just watch the corners. I'm not too worried about this. I think it's going to work well. I The biggest downside being you have to run through this process and then you get to edit your footage. I know we're kind of nagging on real steady go a lot here, but I know there's some problems with hypersmooth as well. Uh, wh well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I suppose you have to buy a GoPro Hero 7 Black, like the new uh, highest end GoPro. It's only available on that. But, but you can it, buy At them. least it's still manufactured. Right, you can buy them. It's not going discontinued. Anytime, um, so. Initially, there were some times, especially on like quadcopters, where hypersmooth could create weird movements but on the newest firmware just make sure to update your gopro yeah. it's pretty damn perfect i would say the biggest drawback is that you can't use an nd filter i, I think i'm going to explain this poorly so here's kind of how i think hypersmooth works is that it's actually gathering the, the footage of the data at a much higher frame rate than what you set it to so even if you set it to output at 30 frames per second, it's actually recording at something much higher and it's taking all those frames and kind of stitching together the footage in a sense to create that stabilized yeah. footage. Yeah. The point is, the reason you use an ND filter is to get a longer shutter speed so you have more motion blur, but that's going to prevent you from using a higher frame rate. Okay. Right? So if you do that, the camera's getting less light and it's not going to be as easy for it to gather data at high say 120 frames per second right. because it's got that nd filter and it's just going to kind of cut down on that motion blur effect mm -hmm. gopro doesn't recommend using an nd filter so when i am flying with hypersmooth turned on i don't use an nd filter the footage still comes out looking super crisp I wish I could have that motion blur. Right, and honestly, if you're shooting in sunset or in sunrise or in cloudy conditions, you really don't need an ND filter anyway. So, honestly, it's not that big of a drawback, and quite frankly, that's one single drawback. I'd say that's really the only drawback. Yeah. So, Hypersmooth is a really awesome solution. However, the results aren't really in the same ballpark. Right? right, and I think that's the difference is you have to go through a lot of hoops. I can't even emphasize enough how stressful. I really thought I was going to drive myself like crazy and go sick trying yeah, to get real steady to go to work. Do a whole, you know what you have to do to make hypersmooth work? You just go into the setting up, oh, turn it on, and it's done. So what's better, hypersmooth or real steady go? Oh, real steady go, 100%. Why? Because it makes the footage look way more cinematic. It looks like something shot out of Hollywood, something professionally done. But I wouldn't use it in all circumstances. And I, I think for what we're doing here, which is you know, chasing a moving object, right? Or flying mm -hmm. in a cinematic location where you're not running into stuff very often or anything like that. I think it's totally worth loosely strapping your GoPro to and getting amazing footage. So for me, I prefer Hypersmooth. I just love the convenience of it. Yeah. It just works. I I know I'm not gonna run into any trouble. I mean, 
I would hate to not be able to use my footage because I didn't have just the right amount of soft mounting. Also, I mean, I like FPV footage. I like more of that dynamic mm. feel. In fact, most of the time when I'm flying freestyle, I don't even use Hypersmooth. I want no, it to be course. just straight raw. I mean, really, it's just so I can brag that I'm flying as smooth as what you're seeing. There's no reason not to have it on, but, but I like that more purest FPV footage. No, right? and I completely respect that. But at the same time, even you yourself have made looking at the real estate footage. No, it's the epic. first time, it's, it's it epic. epic. It's epic, it's better. I feel like I can confidently speak about this with an unbiased opinion because I have gone through the biggest pain in the butt trying to get this to work. And even after going through all these hoops continuously and continuously, it still turns out great. So one final thing that people are gonna wanna know is the price between the two. And Real Steady Go costs $99. Software, everything works great. Um, but you are paying $100 now. How much does Hypersmooth cost? free with your purchase of GoPro. So, so you're gonna have to buy the $400 camera to get it, but... It's I mean, already on there. You still have to buy a $400 camera. To, yeah, you still have to buy that camera to anyway. So quite frankly, Real Steady Go does cost a premium price, but the older version of Real Steady, which is a whole nother topic, and it does work with the Session, the Hero 7, everything like that, is $400, and you still have to have Adobe After Effects. Oh, and it's an After Effects plugin? It's an After Effects plugin, which means you have to pay a monthly membership or buy After Effects. And it's actually an older version of After Effects. It's like 2017. Oh oh, yeah. So, or 2014. Wait, too many hoops. Let us know down below what you honestly think. What do you think guys is think is better? The convenience of Hypersmooth or the magical results of Real Study Go? Be sure to hit that like button if you really enjoyed this video and hit subscribe and turn on that bell so you know when we post these awesome videos. And check out our store, link in the description down below. All right, guys, I'm LeDreb. And I'm Alex Vanover. And we'll see you next time.